Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI X570A Pro motherboard for the AMD Ryzen processor. Now I'm building myself a new budget video editing PC and I decided to go with the Ryzen 7 3800X and when I was looking for components I kept coming back to this board compared to the other ones out there and whilst it isn't a high-end gaming board and it doesn't have some of the features those boards have from a productivity point of view for things like video video editing, I think this board suits my needs perfectly. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you guys an overview of this board, take a close look at it and its features, and at the end of the video I'm going to give you an idea of what I think about it having built it and put it in the case, and actually see how it performs on some benchmarks as well. Now, if you like what you see in this video, please do subscribe to the channel. There's a button in the bottom right hand corner and by doing that, you'll get updates on any future videos I release on doing this build, especially if you're looking to build yourself an AMD based video editing PC, but also other stuff that I do in the future as well. Right, let's get on with it. And the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at this board in depth. The X570A Pro is one of the cheaper X570 base boards and is designed to be used with both the AMD Ryzen 2000 and 3000 series CPUs. The board is based on the AMD AM4 socket and uses an 8 phase VRM. Now these are cooled by two separate heatsinks, one that reaches over the top of the ports on the back and a second one along the top. Now whilst these are fairly large they are not linked by any heat pipes and whilst this is okay for say a standard application if it came to running this board in a high end gaming situation you could struggle to keep the temps under control. Memory wise this board supports up to 4 sticks of dual channel DDR4-440 up to a maximum of 128 gig. The board is fitted with two full size PCIe slots with the top main one being full metal armoured. It also has dual M2 slots with the top one being a 4x4 because of the X570 chipset and the second one being a 3x4. Now the top slot is a full length whereas the bottom one is a slightly restricted length one due to one of the smaller PCIe slots being in the way. Because this is an X570 board it does mean it has an active chipset cooler and this is located in the bottom right hand side. Now this isn't the largest cooler I've seen on a motherboard and it only actually supports the chipset and it doesn't do any cooling for the SSDs either. Now this does come with a small sticker over the top of it when you first get it that says play hard and stay silent and you need to make sure that you do remove this before you put your board in your machine because it would stop the fan running. The board is also fitted with three PCIe 3.0 expansion slots for adding in any additional cards should you need them. To power the board you have your standard 24 pin socket on the right hand side with two CPU power sockets located up in the top left corner, one 8 pin and one 4 pin. Power output wise you have six PWM capable fan headers. Two of these are located at the top for CPU and pump with an additional four accessory ones located along the bottom of the main board in the center. Alongside the onboard M2 slots you have six serial ATA slots for various drives as well and these do also have support for various RAID modes. For connecting to your case and external devices it has your standard front audio header, 4 pin RGB LED header, 2 USB 2.0s and 2 USB 3.2 headers, a 3 pin rainbow LED header as well as a case intrusion header too and all of the usual ones such as your power button, your reset button and LEDs. Looking at your external ports along the back you have your flash BIOS button at the top with a PS2 port and two USB 2.0 type A ports located below. The bottom one of these two ports is your flash BIOS USB port as well. Next to this along the bottom you have a HDMI output, USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A's. Next to that you have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A with a type C located below it. Then you have your LAN port with another two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and then your main optical SPDIF out and audio ports located as they usually are. Moving around to the rear of the board you can see that it is the usual high quality that you would expect from MSI. You find the CPU bracket
socket mount on the rear of the board pre-fitted when you get it and you will also find various bits of labelling located around the back simply giving you its compliance and conformity. There are also some markers telling you to be careful as well as some standoffs pre-mounted onto the board ready just to make sure that nothing shorts out around the voltage area. Overall the board does have a very nice fit and finish to it as you would expect from MSI and it comes across as their usual quality. Now whilst this isn't aimed as a high end gaming board it certainly isn't a cheap motherboard either coming in at about £140 in the UK. Now that is in the lower end of the price range for X570 boards but it is still packed with features and it should cover most people's situations ideally. I would have liked to have seen a bit more cooling especially around the chipset and around the M2 ports however that is what it is. Now you don't get a lot in the package with this one you simply get the board, a couple of cables for your serial ATA as well as a set of instructions and a CD but you're not going to get a huge amount other than that in a board of this price. Now as I was doing this build on a budget I decided to go with the Corsair Carbide Series Spec Delta RGB case. This isn't the largest case in the world and it does come in a little bit shorter than some of the others out there. Now for this build I decided to use the AMD Ryzen 3800X CPU alongside the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM and I chose to go with 32 gig in total. Now overall the build went fairly straightforward although I did have a problem getting my CPU cool in because of how short this case was but I will talk about that in my build video. Overall from the board point of view it went in without any issues and I had no problem setting this one up whatsoever. And here is how the build finally came out. Now I have to say I'm really pleased with this one in both performance as well as the way it looks. Now as I said this isn't the most expensive case in the world but it comes with this nice smoked front cover which allows you to see your LEDs as well as a nice tempered glass side panel. Now the build overall came out really nice especially with the mass amount of LED that I ended up putting into this one between the RAM, the coolers and the number of fans that I've got in this one. Overall, I'm really pleased with how the design turned out. To give you an overview of the spec of this PC, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X and that is cooled by the Corsair H100i RGB Platinum Edition of their cooler and that is a water cooler or an all-in-one water cooler. I've got 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, I'm using the Samsung 512 gig 970 EVO Plus SSD, the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 2060 OC Pro which is 6 gigabyte as well and obviously I'm using the MSI X570A Pro motherboard as this video is about. To give you guys just a quick overview of how this machine actually performs, in Cinebench R20 I'm getting a single core score of 488 and a full multi-core score of 4978. In PC Mark 10 we're getting 6974 and in 3D Mark Time Spy I'm getting 8154. Now comparing this to some of the others out there it is pretty much where it should be and whilst there are some slight variances depending on what graphics card people are using the overall performance is right where I had expected to be and I myself am very very pleased with how long some of the renders are taken to actually put out and the overall performance is very very good now I will do another video on this specifically just doing some render performance as well but that was just to take you over how it looked on some of the benchmarks Overall that is pretty much it for this video. Now I haven't touched on the BIOS or the setup of the motherboard on this video with regards to software and I will actually do that in another one. I do have to say that I've been using this machine for a couple of weeks and I am very impressed with the board and its performance. There are some quirks though and whilst the BIOS is fairly easy to set up there is a few strange things with it as well. The fact that it seems to be in half black and white and half colour keeps leading me to think something is actually wrong but it isn't that is just the way it is and I'm also having a few issues with Dragon Center running in Windows as well and the sensor page seems to stop working and you can't actually bring it up to be able to see the temps and the fan speeds however that really isn't related to the motherboard itself and it's more to do with the software overall it's been absolutely solid I've had no stability problems whatsoever and I have spent a little bit of time configuring all of the fan options and I will look at that as I said in that other video 
it has given me a whole wealth of controls available as well and I've been able to get everything set up and tuned just the way I like it. Now if you've liked what you've seen in this video please do subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the bottom right hand corner. If you'd like to support the channel there are some links in the description as well and if you want to get in touch you can use the email address and contact me there as well. Also put some comments in the description of this video if you have found it useful or if you've got any feedback for me as well. I always appreciate people's words whether they be kind or not so kind. I read every single comment and I always try to respond whenever I can. That is it for this one. Thank you for watching and I will do another video again soon.